How did a beer company get into the theme park business? Stay tuned to this episode of Imagine Erding to find out. Hello everyone, I'm George Taylor from Imagine Erding. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on theme park history and more Disney fun. Mention Busch Gardens and you think about Busch Gardens Williamsburg or Busch Gardens Tampa, right? But it's really much more than that. The parent company of Busch Gardens operates 12 properties across the country, and five of them alone are in Florida. The company has a rich history that dates back more than 100 years, but before I get started with the theme park business, I think we need to take a look back at the Anheuser-Busch company and its rise. Yes, the Bush in Busch Gardens does refer to the brewery company. The story starts in St. Louis in 1852 when George Snyder opened the Bavarian Brewing Company. It went through a few expansions and then some financial difficulties. In 1860, it was sold to a local pharmacist, William Donch, and a German-born soap maker named Eberhard Anheuser. In 1869, Donch was bought out by Adolphus Busch, who had emigrated from Germany in 1857 and married Anheuser's daughter Lily in 1861. Adolphus made a lot of changes that would cater to the company's success. He was the first American brewer to use pasteurization, which kept the beer fresh longer. He introduced mechanical refrigeration and refrigerated railroad cars. They were also the first to bottle beer, which along with the ability to transport it via railway, increased the demand for American beer. Budweiser, introduced in 1876, is considered the first national beer. Eberhard Anheuser passed away in 1880, and the Bush family took total control of the company, with Adolphus becoming the president. The company would be named Anheuser-Busch Brewing Association, and the company would survive the Prohibition movement by making brewer's yeast, ice cream, malt extract, and Bevo, a non-alcoholic malt beverage. In 1959, Anheuser-Busch created the Busch Entertainment Company to run the Busch Garden Park located outside of Tampa, near its brewery. They offered tours of the facilities and free samples. The park near Williamsburg opened in 1975 near the brewery and was more of a theme park from the beginning. The Tampa Park would grow into a theme park over the years. In 1989, Anheuser-Busch purchased the SeaWorld Parks from publisher Harcourt, Brace, and Jovanovich. This also included the Boardwalks and Baseball, which closed immediately, and Cypress Gardens, which they sold in 1995, and would eventually become Legoland, owned by Merlin. Now, you're probably wondering, how did the Anheuser-Busch and the Bush family get into theme parks? Well, I'm glad you asked. To get started, we need to travel to 1904 and visit Pasadena, California. The weather is lovely, isn't it? Adolphus and Lily arrived in Pasadena in their 80-foot-long Pullman car, and back in the day, rail was the preferred way to travel. They rented 10 rooms at the Hotel Raymond, and it was announced a few weeks later that they purchased a property overlooking the Arroyo Seco Canyon. They constructed an English-style mansion as their winter home, on two acres. Um, winter home? Well, they also had their primary residence in St. Louis, a home in Cooperstown, New York, and a retreat near Wiesbaden, Germany, that was called Villa Lily. The property was on a ravine and needed a lot of work to create the terraces for the gardens. Eventually, Bush Gardens, as it was known in the earliest 20th century, would encompass the upper gardens, the lower gardens, and the annex. The upper gardens were 14 acres of the very formal Victorian gardens and were open to the public in 1906. The 16 acres of the less formal lower gardens were opened in the late spring of 1906. Lily wanted to recreate a fairy tale gardens similar to their villa in Germany, and it included fairy tale figurines and settings. By July 1909, both upper and lower gardens were open seven days a week free of charge. The lower gardens were a very popular spot. Film companies loved the wooded settings. Frankenstein, The Adventures of Robin Hood, and Gone with the Wind had filming locations there. There were Easter egg hunts for orphans and fundraisers, dog shows, carnivals, concerts, 
and a political rally or two. The annex was an 11-acre parcel that had its own deer park and gardens when Adolphus bought it in 1910. California's largest home, built in 1891 for Professor Thaddeus Lowe, was on the property. The 24,000-square-foot home served as accommodations for the extended Bush families and was the site of the lavish 50th wedding anniversary of Adolphus and Lily. Sadly, in 1913, Adolphus passed away in Germany, and his wife offered the land to the city of Pasadena, but the city refused. The 36-acre property was subdivided in 1936, and the original Bush Gardens was closed in 1938. Obviously, the Bush family would open up the Tampa Brewing facilities for tours, and that would be the genesis of the Bush theme parks that we see in Tampa and Williamsburg today. Still, each one of those parks will need a history of its own. For the rest of this video, though, let's take a look at the two other properties that Bush opened and then sadly had to close. In Van Nuys, California, about 20 miles west of Pasadena, Anheuser-Busch opened a brewery in 1954. And after the success of the Tampa facility in 1959, which offered a beer garden and bird sanctuary, Anheuser-Busch decided to offer the same at the Van Nuys facility. So in 1966, Bush Gardens Van Nuys was opened on a 17-acre cabbage patch adjacent to the brewery. Just like in Tampa, a beer garden and a bird sanctuary were the first public additions. As the popularity grew, they expanded with an additional five acres. Part of the expansion included a monorail that snaked around the grounds and through the brewery. In addition to the attractions, the biggest draw was the free beer. Bush's policy was that visitors could get two 10-ounce glasses of beer at each of the five pavilions on the property. That's a lot of beer. Wow. Based on my research, there was no fee at first. And at some point, probably around the expansion of 1972, there was a $1.75 admission fee that would triple before the park closed. There were 2,000 birds that represented over 25 different species, including flamingos, toucans, macaws, storks, swans, herons, egrets, penguins, and more. Penguins? Huh. There were bird shows, bird-focused tours, and educational opportunities centered around birds. But the park wasn't all for the birds. Besides the monorail, which pretty much circled the whole park and the brewery, there were some other attractions. The Yahoo Flume Ride was one of the most popular attractions and eventually wound up at the Great Escape Amusement Park in New Jersey. I couldn't find a real confirmation, but I'm assuming it was an aero log flume. There was also a speedboat ride and the Tropical Cruise. Sadly, the park costs couldn't keep up with the dwindling attendance. People still came for the free beer, but the 1972 expansion cost over $4 million and the crowds never materialized. The park was officially shut down in 1976 and operated as a sales promotional facility. Beer samples were still free, and there was a $1 charge for parking and $1 for the Tropical Cruise boat ride, which toured various habitats. The birds became the primary focus in 1977, and Bush Gardens Los Angeles operated as a bird sanctuary. You could still tour the brewery, which featured a recorded narration by Ed McMahon, and you could take the Tropical Cruise boat ride. There were at least still 1,500 birds, many of which walked freely throughout the park. In 1979, many of the birds were relocated to the Los Angeles Zoo and the two East Coast theme parks. The gardens were paved over and the brewery was expanded. To this day, there are still birds, mainly parrots and other exotic species, that escaped and can be seen and heard in the Van Nuys area. Refugees from Bush Gardens, no doubt. Now, let's move a little bit east to Texas and look at another defunct Bush Gardens property located in the Lone Star State, Bush Gardens, Houston. Anheuser-Busch built a brewery in Houston in 1966, the same year that the Bush Gardens Van Nuys Park opened. Immediately planning for a garden park began and it was opened in May of 1971, five years after the Van Nuys Park was opened. This was an 11 to $12 million park that spanned 40 acres, and 12 of which were dedicated to parking alone. And Busch Gardens Houston offered similar attractions as the Van Nuys counterpart. The overall theme of Busch Gardens Houston was Asia, because that makes total sense. 
One of the two main attractions was a boat ride that covered two-thirds of the park. It included passages through the ice cave and the free flight aviary. The boat ride took you by islands that had monkeys, elephants, deer, Bengal tigers, rhinoceros, bears, and cat cubs. There were also antelopes, yaks, camels, and lesser pandas, and an area where children could pet lambs, goats, and llamas. There was also a train that was modeled after the English steam trains that were used in Asia in the 19th century. You could walk through most of the park as well. One of the big draws, again, besides the free beer for adults, was the 950-seat amphitheater with bird shows performed at least three times daily. The park operated seven days a week during the 1971 and 1972 summers. It was only open on weekends during the 1971 winter season and closed by December 1972 due to falling well below the expected 800,000 attendance levels. Continuing the Bush history, in 2008, the Anheuser-Busch companies, including many breweries across the globe, would be bought by InBev, a Belgian-Brazilian brewing company. In 2008, the theme park division was sold to the Blackstone Group, and SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment was formed. Blackstone bought the parks for $2.7 billion, and part of the deal included keeping the Busch Gardens' name for the Tampa and Williamsburg's properties in perpetuity. If you want to learn more about Busch Gardens Park, check out these videos that I got linked here so you can see more about the Busch Gardens Tampa experience. I'm George Taylor from Imagine Erding, and I hope to see you in the parks.